Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a great start to their week and is staying healthy and optimistic. Hi, Marjona. Hi, Yoon. Sijuti. Good to see many students in the class. Today, we're focusing on speaking for the IELTS. Part one, especially band nine. Yes, you can. You can do it. IELTS is an English proficiency exam. It's not a test for native English. Many people think Band 9 is native English. It's not native English. It means you're an expert user of the English language. And we will talk about what you can do to be an expert user of the English language. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. On both of these websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you. This is our academic website here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join our premium package. This is our general IELTS website here with the green background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package there. All right, everyone, let me just show you where you can practice your speaking for free, 100% free speaking practice with other IELTS students. If you click this green button, you can create a free demo account, and then you get a My Student account. You can log in to your My Student account. And when you're in your My Student account, on the right-hand side, you will find this Student Partner Speaking button. Now you click on that, and then uh, you can absolutely start speaking with some other students who are usually in here. Right now, we have lots of students. We have uh, Hamad in here. We have Siraj. We have JNN. We have Akshay. So we have students in here are waiting for you to video audio chat make sure the topic stays on IELTS respect each other and uh, practice with each other for absolutely free if you have troubles with it it could be um, because of where you're located you might need to use a VPN a virtual proxy network I'll let you figure that out on your own uh, make sure to enable your audio your video depending on how you're chatting there's also questions that you can use. Uh, so here's some sample IELTS questions. You just click on those and then you can talk about people, objects. So that's absolutely there for you. And it is 100% free. So uh, check it out. All right, let me brighten up our lives here a little bit. Just had to keep it dark so you could see that background clearly. Okay, everyone. Make sure you use it, lots of people do. Hi Rashika, hi Nick Hill, hi Ois, hi Abhishek, hi Jainil. Nice to see many of our members joining in as well. Fantastic, good to see you all. All right. So um, you can check out our Instagram accounts. They're brand new. We have lots and lots of information and help there for you. IELTS underscore AE help for academic IELTS Instagram and G IELTS for general IELTS Instagram. You can use the code INSTA25 to get a 25% discount on our websites, aehelp.com and gieltshelp.com as a promotion. And if you have questions, you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will definitely uh, answer as quickly as possible. All right, Faith, Oni, oh, welcome to the live lesson. Uh, we have lots of live classes this week. So today, right now, speaking part one. Tomorrow, we're going to have task two for members, some reading for everyone. Then we'll have some more writing and reading, and we will have speaking uh, two classes on Saturday. So six more classes in the week. Definitely, okay? Adil, I'm going to give you lots of tips on how to improve your speaking right now, and you can even practice with me right now, so hang in there. Okay, so uh, the IELTS uh, speaking uh, section. Okay, uh, now, uh, many of you are getting ready to do your IELTS exam, 
And uh, if you are registering for your IELTS exam online, you get to choose a few different times for your uh, speaking, okay, often. You get three different options in many cases when you're registering online. Uh, if you have the chance, the best time usually, so this is just, a, this is an interesting tip here, okay. Um, so uh, when you register for your IELTS exam, and maybe many of you know this that already did your IELTS exam, so uh, when you register for your IELTS exam, you can pick from three different times. My suggestion is pick a time between 9.30 and 12.30 if possible. It is proven that the human brain functions at its peak during these hours, okay? So uh, if you have the chance, pick a time between 9.30 and 12.30. That's a.m., of course. You're not going to be uh, a.m. and 12.30, it's p.m., okay? So within that kind of three-hour uh, time frame, all right? That's when you want to uh, kind of get it. Um, if you want the kind of statistical um, facts, uh, most studies show that human brains function optimally f around 10.30 to 11 in the morning. No, well, yeah. That's why businesses like to hold meetings at around that 10, 11 o'clock time, okay? So uh, when you're registering for your exam, it'll give you a uh, a choice of times to do your exam. Um, ideally, you want to do it around then, okay? And of course, make sure to speak English all day of, on your exam, okay? So make sure to use English all day from the morning on the day of your exam until you are finished. Very important, all right? Everybody catch that, yeah? That can easily make a band score difference or even more, so just building up your fluency. I've seen students when they start an exam cold, uh, like just without any warm up, and it's usually not very good, okay? So um, definitely all day, at least until you're finished, okay? That's another really important tip. Okay, uh, and one more tip as we get going here, okay? So speak in full sentences um, by using the question in your answer. All right, I'll show you what to do there, okay? Uh, so you go into your IELTS speaking exam and uh, you have to get there 30 minutes early, okay? So when you register, it will say, be at your exam 30 minutes. So if let's say that your exam, your speaking exam is at 10.30, then the instructions will say get to your exam at 10 o'clock. Get there even earlier, okay? So uh, get to your, let me just put this up here still, okay? Uh, so the instructions uh, tell you to arrive uh, 30 minutes before your test time, actually 40, yeah, 30 minutes for the sit down part as well. Uh, but you should actually um, arrive uh, like even one hour before and get comfortable and practice speaking, okay? So that's really important, do that as well, okay? So not just 30 minutes. 30 minutes is absolutely the minimum. Abhishek Kadam, if you have a question, just ask it. If I see it, I'll answer it. If I miss it, send me an email. Okay, so uh, you get to your exam, you're there, you're getting comfortable, you're building your confidence. 
And uh, you take some deep breaths, relax. The sun will shine tomorrow, I promise you. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's a proficiency exam. You've done everything you can. Uh, there's nothing more to do within that short amount of time. Just remember your strategies. Remember what you need to focus on. We'll talk about those in a moment. And then the examiner calls you into the exam room. And these days often you're wearing a mask. So make sure you put your mask on at least 45, 50 minutes before your exam as soon as you get there. Okay. And uh, then uh, the examiner calls you and sits you down and says, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. May I see your identification? Now you have to take the exact same identification with you that you used to register for the exam. So if you use your passport, take your passport with you. Okay. All right, so uh, go ahead and answer this question for me, students. May I see your identification? Oh, it says, my pleasure. This is my passport that I used to apply for the IELTS exam. Please take a look. Abhishek says, yes, of course. Here's my passport, which I used for registration. Please take a look. Janiel says, yes, of course. Here it is. Please have a look. Uh, you can probably see this through the shield. Yeah, if there's a shield between you. Okay. Um, Dilpreet says, yeah, sure, this is my identification that I used to register for the exam. Dilpreet Hart, careful with your spelling. Kasir Shah says, sure, here's the ID I used for registration. Please have a look. Yeah, and uh, you can use uh, the question again, right? So instead of identification, you can say, yes, here is my ID, rather my passport. Uh, that I used during registration. Please uh, take a look. Okay, so I'm doing some nice iteration here, some nice paraphrasing. Repeat after me. May I see your identification? Yes, here's my ID, rather my passport, that I used during registration. Please take a look. And then you pass on that. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, it's a short answer. Again, fluency, show fluency right away, all right? So uh, again, speaking everyone, so make sure to speak and repeat as I say the questions and the answers, okay? Speak and repeat, okay? Show fluency right away. Sachin says, yes, of course, here's my passport that I used to register for the exam. I believe you will find my picture and personal details on the second page. Sachin, I would, I would finish that. It's nice fluency. I would finish that sentence with where they can find it. Obviously, they'll find uh, your picture and um, personal information, birth date, and so forth. Uh, tell them where you think it is, okay? So I believe you will find my picture and personal details on the second page, okay? Okay, Abhishek Kadam, good answer as well. All right, and then while they have your identification or while you're showing them your identification with COVID these days, sometimes you just hold up your ID, uh, they will then ask for your name. They're matching your picture, your name with your ID. So here we go. Uh, what is your full name? Now, your full name exactly the same way as it is on your ID, okay? So Janiel says, my full name is Janiel Gabani. Please just call me by my nickname, Jarvis. All right, Jarvis. I, I love that name, Jarvis. It's just such a nice, strong name. Okay, Surya says, my full name is Surya Shanmugam. Uh, please call me Surya. Okay. Yeah, please call me by my first name, Surya. Okay. All right, Tiger World says, my surname is Akbar and my given name is Usman. Uh, please call me Usman. Yeah, it's good. Uh, so you can call me Usman is fine as well. Okay, Jian Titan says, my given name is, uh, or my, sorry, my given name is Chalun and my surname is Chien. Please call me by my English nickname, Titan. Thank you. Okay, so good, good. All right. Uh, careful with your plurals, Titan. Okay, my given name is, if it's one name with the hyphenated, if it's two separate names, then my given name Z are, you need the S, Chao Lun, okay? 
So careful with plurals. You don't want to make awkward mistakes during this first bit of introductions. That's just really awkward. To get that band nine, and yes, you can, uh, you have to be very accurate and clear on these kinds of meet and greet types of questions because obviously an expert English user would have no problem in this kind of meet and greet scenario and they would not make any unnatural mistakes, okay? All right, so uh, my uh, given names are Laura uh, Alexandra and my family name is uh, Watson. Uh, please just call me by my first name, Laura. Okay. Uh, here we go. So repeat after me. What is your full name? My given names are Laura Alexandra and my family name is Watson. Uh, please just call me by my first name, Laura. I'm just making this up, okay? But uh, it's an example. And again, choosing a female name here. And then the examiner will say, okay, Laura, uh, here is your identification back. Maybe you just put it in your pocket so you don't forget it. And then the examiner will say, uh, let's uh, start with part one. I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where is your hometown? Okay, very common question for icebreakers. Where do you live? Where is your hometown? Where is your hometown basically means where are you from? Where did you grow up? Where do you live? So you can answer basically where your childhood was, okay? Harpreet Kaur says, I hail from a small village called Mangual, which is located in Punjab in the south part of India. Okay, good. Yeah, that's a nice answer. Abhishek says, my birthplace is the center of India, Delhi. Uh, not only is it the heart of my country, India, but it is also renowned for its distinct cultures and traditions, its uh, heritage monuments and uh, old buildings. Okay, Abhishek, good. Couple of slight corrections to be more natural, but otherwise quite good. Sammy says, my hometown is Vijayawada, which is one of the banks of the river Krishna and Andhra Pradesh, located in the southern part of India. Okay, Sammy, good. Nice description. Inaya Alves says, I was born in... Cuaba, the capital city of the state of Mats Grosso, which is located in the central part of Brazil. Okay, Inaya, very good. Nice. Nice description. Sorry if I'm having trouble pronouncing some of those words. I'm sure they're pronounced a bit differently, but uh, very nice. Okay, Dilpreet Singh says, My hometown is London, the capital of UK. It is located in the south east area of England on the River Thames. It is well known around the world for its amazing history, architecture, music, and fashion. Okay, Dilpreet, good. Yeah, you can say that. Now, careful, because if it seems like you haven't spent your whole life in London, you should explain why you feel that it's your hometown. So you should say, my hometown is London. I have been here for the past couple of years, and I wish to stay here for the rest of my life. I feel at home here. It's the capital of the UK and it's located in the southern part of England along the River Thames. Okay, so explain yourself if you're not being clear. That's very important. Otherwise, the examiner will think that you didn't understand the question. Okay, one difference. So um, I'd like to explain this and I'll do this in a second. So I'll give you an answer here and then I'll get into this uh, kind of tip or strategy a little bit. So repeat after me. Where is your hometown? My hometown where I was born and raised is Victoria. Uh, BC. Uh, it is the capital of the province and is located on Vancouver Island, which is one of the most western regions 
of Canada. It is known as the city of gardens. Okay, so here we go. Uh, where is your hometown? My hometown, where I was born and raised, is Victoria, BC. It is the capital of the province, and it is located on Vancouver Island, which is one of the most western regions of Canada. It is known as the city of gardens. All right, so uh, a really important kind of note to keep in mind here. Okay, I want everybody to remember this. Note, the IELTS speaking exam is not a typical conversation. Now, some of you are probably going, yeah, Adrian, I, I knew that. Okay, all right. So you don't just talk to the examiner as you would to your friend or a colleague that you meet for lunch. Okay, it's not the same idea. Okay, so for instance, the examiner... will not ask you for clarification to your answers if they are confused. They might in part three, but in most cases, they will just go to the next question. So, you have to be extra careful to make sure that the answers you give are absolutely clear. Okay, so in a real conversation, when you're speaking to your friend or your colleague and you're sitting down for lunch and you're having a good conversation, if one of you is confused about the information the other person's saying, you'll stop them and you'll say, oh, I'm sorry, do you mean that's where you grew up or that's where you're living right now? Or is it simply where you've just immigrated and you're working right now? So they can clarify, oh, oh, no, no, I mean, my hometown is London. I was actually born here, and then I lived here for my first five years. Then my parents traveled back to India. I grew up in India, but then now I'm living here again. So I consider uh, England and London especially my hometown, right? So you can explain yourself. You can't do that in IELTS, okay? It's 12 to 15 minutes. It's go, go, go. There's a set of questions that you're being asked, and there's no chance for clarification like in a real conversation. So you have to be exceptionally clear. Everybody clear on that? Everybody good? And you have to practice that. That doesn't come easily and naturally without practice, even in your own language, okay? So you have to practice clear and accurate communication. Everybody clear? Okay. It's not like a chit chat or a conversation where the examiner can at, or the person can ask back of, Hey, can you explain that a bit more? I didn't get you. The examiner is not going to say, Hey, I didn't get you what you mean by your hometown. Okay. All right. So I can see some thumbs up and that. So it's good. All right. Good, good. Okay. So let's keep going. Um, so the first, the question here was, where is your hometown? And then the next question, they often uh, will follow up with a question uh, is, what do you like about it? Okay, so where's your hometown? And then, uh, what do you like about it? Yeah, Gian, absolutely. Clear and accurate communication. Very important. Okay. All right. Let's see. So here we go. Lots of great answers coming up. I can see them. Okay. Uh, Makbuba, send me an email and I'll answer that question for you, okay? Harpreet says, I like my village because it's a dazzling place and I like the um, nature. Uh, it's got a lot of greenery uh, where I can spend my leisure time. Okay, Harpreet, so that's okay, but it's not a very clear explanation and example. So that's where I would like to see uh, more um, explanation, more examples. So what do you mean it's got a lot of greenery and a lot of forests? Explain that a little bit clearer, okay? Samir says, I mainly like the culture of the people there. Uh, it is very simple living and the city is famous for the wholesale of saris, an Indian dress tradition, and for the famous food of the city, uh, dokla. 
Okay, Samir, again, good. I think you could do a little bit better. What is dokla? What kind of a dish is it? What is it made of? Uh, what kind of a spice does it use? Um, what do you mean the people are simple? Are they friendly, kind, helpful? Give me a little bit more, okay? Oh, it says, uh, in my amazing hometown, I like the kind people. They are generous, and I miss the Forta River. I usually spend five hours for fishing and barbecuing there on the weekends, and I like to picnic in the spring and enjoy the fresh air. Okay, oh, it's, that's good description, all right? Isabek says, in Nukus, I am quite partial to the skyscrapers, which are located close to my home, and I can uh, generate some ideas when I see them uh, for my business. And aside from that, I like the National Museum called Sovitsky. Okay, Isabek, very nice, good description. Uh, Isabek, uh, when you like the skyscrapers in your city, like you live in New York or Dubai, uh, then you would like the skyline, okay? That's the most accurate term. So uh, if you have a city where you have mountains and uh, skyscrapers, then you like the skyline. Vancouver has a beautiful skyline, okay? So I really love the skyline of uh, Vancouver, the skyscrapers uh, with <clears throat> the mountains and the backdrop are just surreal okay so that's kind of what you would want to say so skyline skyline the skyline of dubai is absolutely incredible with those monstrous skyscrapers including the burj khalifa right okay Let's see. Uh, Jian Titan says, uh, Tainan is a city known as the food paradise of Taiwan. Lots of uh, cuisines are very tasty. In addition, Tainan re uh, retains a great amount of historical uh, buildings, and I love seeing this rich culture of food and architecture. Uh, very good, Titan. A little bit better English, a little bit more vocabulary to explain yourself better, but the idea is good. Arda says, basically in my hometown, there's lots of shopping centers, uh, so I can go uh, shopping with my mom to buy whatever I need. Every weekend we go out. Now, However, nowadays we can't because of the COVID pandemic. Okay, Arda, not bad. Again, a little bit more diversity of grammar and be more specific, right? So I love shopping for clothes and shoes. And there are definitely lots of boutiques like Versace and Gucci with the latest trends. My mom and I really enjoy shopping. Even if we don't buy any new uh, attire, we love the window shopping. Okay, so a little bit more lexical resource, a little bit more grammar. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, so what do I like about Victoria? Hmm. All right. Uh, I love my hometown of Victoria, not only for its rich greenery, but also uh, for all of the beaches uh, which surround the city on almost all sides across the Strait of Juan de Fuca I can see the Olympic mountain range of the US and the people are very Kind and happy most of the time. Okay. So uh, here we go. What do you like about it? I love my hometown of Victoria, not only for its rich greenery, but also for all of the beaches which surround the city on almost all sides. Across the Strait of Juan de Fuca, I can see the Olympic uh, Mountains of the U.S., and uh, people are very kind and happy most of the time. Okay, great. So now we'll continue with some more of part one. And again, answer, explanation, details, 
quantitative language, okay? So numbers, descriptions, go into details. Use your adjective clauses, which, that, who, okay? Use your connectives, not only, but also, therefore, as a result, consequently. So think about your connectives, use your connectives. So um, the uh, examiner here will introduce the topic of part one. Let's talk about school, and then they'll ask you some questions about school. Here we go. First one, usually a very simple question just to get you kind of going. Be fluent, continue being fluent. Where do you go to school? Give a nice full answer for this. Okay. So for Dov says, I used to go to school number 41, which is located in the heart of St. Petersburg. Nowadays, uh, my son goes to the same institution. He is in grade two. Yes, the beautiful cycle of life for Dov's. Um, where do you go to school for Dov's? Uh, perhaps you go to school here on YouTube to learn for the IELTS exam. Virtual school is kind of a location as well, so think outside the box. Uh, I go to school in my office. I turn on my computer and I log into the University of Wisconsin Educational Psychology site to study for my master's degree, right? So you can go for the virtual world of school as well. It doesn't have to be a physical location necessarily. Think outside the box. The question is present tense. It's where do you go to school now? So if you do go to school, some form of school right now, that's what you should be talking about, not where you went to school, but where you go to school, okay? Pay attention to the tense of the question. Oa says, I have graduated from school of nursing in uh, 2008 where I attended um, classes uh, for a couple of years and it's about 20 kilometers from my place. Okay, Oa's good quantitative language again, you're talking about the past. I'm more interested in the present, where you go to school. If you don't currently go to school, then you need to mention that. Then you need to say, currently I'm not attending any school unless I uh, consider my studies at home uh, on the internet, okay? But then you need to make that clear. Un says, I go to Ngothi. Naham High School, which is about a kilometer from my home. It's located in Haiba, Trung Street, and it's near Timi Local Park. I usually ride my bike to school with my friends. Very nice, son. It's a really nice answer. Good quantitative language. It's present tense. It's clearly understandable. Say it with good fluency and, of course, with a much better accent for those names than I did. And you're on your way to a band nine. Nicely done. So, um, right after Un, students saying, I lived in China previously and now I've moved to Hong Kong to learn and continue my um, studies. So, the establishment uh, where I go for lessons is Hong Kong. Okay, you need to be a little bit clear. Uh, I cannot pinpoint the place. So, you need to name the school. You need to name a little bit more accurately what it is. Okay. All right. So here we go. I'm going to give you an answer, and then you can see and compare your answer to mine. So where do you go to school? Um, I'm currently attending online classes at UBC, the University of British Columbia, for my uh, master's in educational psychology. So uh, physically, I go to school in my home office. However, uh, virtually, I attend classes with uh, 20 other uh, students, or better said, peers, in my program online. 
All right. So again, uh, think outside the box, include quantitative information, and uh, be specific. Here we go. Repeat after me. Where do you go to school? I'm currently attending online classes at UBC, the University of British Columbia, for my master's in educational psychology. So physically, I go to school in my home office. However, virtually, I attend classes with 20 other peers in my program online. And if I want to add a little bit more clarity, I can say I sit down at my desk at around 9 a.m. and log in to uh, a live lecture. All right, uh, next question. Here we go. Now we're looking at past tense. Uh, what other grammar are we looking for here? So now the examiner says, what other schools have you attended? What other schools have you attended? What's the grammar that the examiner is looking for here in your response? Okay, what grammar? is the examiner looking for here with this question? What other schools have you attended? Okay, Abhishek Kadam says, have you, and what is have you? Um, it's actually have attended. It's a little bit better to think about that. Uh, Hadise Cage says, it's present perfect. Yeah, it is present perfect, absolutely. And uh, what else am I paying attention to? So here, I'm paying attention to my band nine answer. My band nine answer will include the present perfect and will be, or it will be, plural. Okay, why? Because uh, we have um, uh, plurals here, schools. Okay, so don't just talk about one school, talk about at least two, okay, your high school, your elementary school, so present perfect and plural, pay attention uh, to all of that. Harwinder, congratulations on your 6.5 overall score, I hope that gets you to where you are planning to go, you're very welcome. Uh, Harwinder, send me uh, an email, I would love to have your testimonial up on our site. Uh, if anybody um, would like to send us a testimonial after doing a good job on their exam, uh, just email us at adrian at aehelp.com. We always love seeing our students' success stories, and we post those on our website and our Instagram. So um, we love getting those, and it helps other students to uh, learn and improve as well through using our materials, whether free or paid. doesn't really matter, okay? All right. So... Uh, Sundar, yeah, absolutely. Masters in Educational Psychology is definitely a school program. Any kind of learning, official learning, is a school program. Uh, Jainil says, I have attended two other institutions. The first one, I have just completed my bachelor studies in aerospace major at Peru University. And before my graduation, I had completed my higher secondary at, very nice, Jainil, very nice use of present perfect and past perfect. Okay, um, Furkan Olgun says, in the past, I've attended uh, two schools in Turkey when I was in eighth grade, which was a private organization located in Istanbul. Also, I've attended another school in Turkey, um, which was a private organization located in Istanbul. Okay, you have some repetition there, Furkan. I'm not sure if that was purposeful. It looks a little bit different, but awkwardly the same. Uh, all right, Samir says, I have attended many types of schools like junior college, degree college, and currently I'm doing my master's so that I can get a good job uh, and also to boost my knowledge in my field. Okay, Samir, don't go into the present too much. The question is about the past. So focus on the past, okay? Nikhil says, I had attended my secondary education at City International School and also did my grade 12 
at Poon High School. Okay, I have also done my grade 12. Okay, so here it's a good time to mix present and past perfect. Okay. All right. Abhishek Kadam says, I have attended uh, two schools in my past. One is KV and the other is MB Patel. Uh, both of them are located in my hometown, about 10 kilometers from my home. Good, Abhishek Kadam. That's what we're going for. Nice, uh, natural, quantified language. Okay. All right. So, yes. Um, I have attended several different uh, schools uh, while growing up, some public and some private. I had attended Athlone Elementary uh, School from kindergarten to uh, grade six. Then I went to Shoreline Middle School and finally I graduated uh, from Mount Douglas High School. These were the public schools uh, that where I learned until the age uh, 16, till age 16. Meanwhile, I also enrolled in some uh, vocational education like athletics, classes as well as music lessons. Okay, I'm getting a bit carried away, but I uh, just wanted to show you a range of responses that would suffice for this kind of a question. So um, here we go. Uh, repeat after me. What, are, what other schools have you attended? Now, again, paying attention to present perfect and plurals. I have attended uh, several different schools while growing up, some public and some private. I had attended Athlone Elementary School from kindergarten to grade six. Then I went to Shoreline Middle School, and finally I graduated from Mount Douglas High School. Notice the um, chronological ordering here. So whenever you're talking about the past or the present or the future, it's a good idea to practice your chronological communication. Okay, chronological communication means that you can jump back to a certain time and then you can go from there forward into the present. It's much clearer for your audience than if you're jumping around like, oh yeah, I graduated from Mount Doug High School. Before that, I had gone to Shoreline Middle School. Oh yeah, and then after that, I actually attended um, a junior college as well. And then in the very beginning, I went to Athlone Elementary School. Yeah, okay, it can be understood, but your listener at this point might be going, so which one was first and which one was last? Um, so you want to practice speaking in a linear chronological uh, kind of way or structure so that it's clearer for your audience, okay? All right, so anytime that you're practicing talking about the past to present, uh, work on building chronological structure, okay? So uh, these were the public schools where I learned until age 16. Meanwhile, I also enrolled in some vocational education like athletics classes as well as music lessons, all right? So just a quick tip here, right? And if, you, if it doesn't work the first time, no worries, go back and correct. So tip, um, whenever you are reporting events uh, in time, work to speak or communicate in a chronological order from 
oldest to most recent. This will lead to clarity, which in turn will lead to higher band scores. Okay, especially in part two. So especially if you're talking about an event in the past in part two for the cue card, uh, be very careful to retain a chronological sequence of events as much as possible. Okay, that will be much clearer uh, for your examiner. Okay, so we're talking about schools and... Um, the next question that the examiner is asking here is, which was your favorite and why? So here it, they're asking basically, which was your favorite school and why? So which was your favorite school and why? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay, uh, Violet Nguyen says, you helped me a lot with my homework, grammar, vocabulary, and more. Okay, uh, I see Violet, there's your top part. So Violet Nguyen says, my favorite school was my English school because it was uh, my childhood school when I was um, in primary school and it was the school which helped me get good at English. Also, I met a lot of foreign teachers that helped me with my homework, grammar, vocabulary. Okay, Violet, don't say and more because that's useless. It doesn't mean anything to your listener. And also be really careful about saying school, school, school. Okay, so my favorite school was... Um, English vocational because it was my um, childhood studies where uh, when I was in primary school okay so you want to try to paraphrase and cut out some of the school 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 it's a little bit awkward all right okay Vaishnavi Reddy says, my all-time favorite over all the schools which I attended was Ravindra Bhakrathi, where I studied my 10th standard, which gave me a lot of amazing memories. And that was the school where I met most of my good friends who I hang out with to this day. Vaishnavi, very nice. I can see where you're going with that, even though the end got cut off. So very good. Uh, oh, it says, throughout my education, I preferred my nursing school the most because I ha met a lot of friends there and I have a lot of great memories. Also, uh, I like to help patients um, and people th uh, through the knowledge that I gained in my nursing classes. Okay, oh, it's very good. So you liked your most recent kind of education. Issa Beck says, that's quite a tough question. My favorite school was... Uh, Pushkin, as I mentioned, um, studying lots of information and the students were friendly and kind. I was quite keen of the food there because it was good. Ishabek, I'm not sure. Are you talking about the food they served at lunch or something like that? Uh, you have to clarify that. Uh, in most Canadian or American schools, they don't serve lunch during lunchtime. You have to bring your own. So uh, make sure to clarify Okay. All right. Uh, Ferdov says, I loved uh, my university studies more than any other, uh, specifically my uh, studies in economics, as I was not only uh, taught uh, information that interested me, but I also made a lot of friends there who have uh, become very close to me over the years, and uh, I'm still interacting with them till now. All right, Ferdov's good answer. I made a few corrections to have that sound a little bit more natural, okay? So uh, that's a tough question. It's a fair enough. It is a tough question, especially if you like school. So that's a tough question. As I've been fortunate enough um, to attend many good schools where I've made many good friends. However, if I had to choose, I would say that my four years of undergraduate studies at the 
University of uh, Victoria are my favorite simply because I was learning exactly my field of interest, psychology, and I was independent to make decisions without the consent of my parents uh, for the first time. Okay, so here we go. Repeat after me. Which was your favorite? That's a tough question as I've been fortunate enough to attend many good schools where I've made many good friends. However, if I had to choose, I would say that my uh, four years of undergraduate studies at the University of Victoria are my favorite simply because I was learning exactly my field of interest, psychology, and I was independent to make decisions without the consent of my parents for the first time in my life. All right, so that response shows you that band nine level complexity where I'm playing around with the grammar of my answer. I'm building a lot of fluency using quite a range of vocabulary as well. And of course, being very, very original. That's my final tip for today is make sure to be original. For band nine marks. Okay, I keep reminding students about that and uh, you definitely want to uh, do that. Okay, so tip. Tip, tip, be original, all right? Okay, here are a few more questions for you. You can practice these on your own on our websites with other students. Do you enjoy school, why or why not? Uh, what is your favorite subject? Uh, what is a typical day in high school in your country? That would be an interesting one to talk about. That could be a part two question as well, by the way. All right, everyone, uh, fantastic job. You all put in a great effort. I see lots of fantastic responses where many of you are uh, giving answers, explanations, and examples. That's superb. For lots more speaking, as well as help with other sections of the IELTS, visit us at aehelp.com where we have HD videos as well as original exams, uh, an app for your phone. The app is Academic IELTS Help. Uh, for General IELTS, gltshelp.com. The app is General IELTS Help. Uh, and uh, join many, many students who have succeeded using our materials. You will often see them come back in live classes and share their marks as well. You're welcome, uh, Furkan, Nikhil, uh, Abhishek. Thank you, members. Uh, thank you, Eugene, for the little clown emoji. That's cute. Um, Ozod Beck, you're absolutely welcome as well. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Keep up the good studies. You're all brilliant, beautiful people. Remember that. I'm Adrian, signing out from Budapest. Bye for now.